Hey, nice deadline, Chief. Kane's fitting in real well. It's only two games. Yeah, only two games without a point and on the ice for four goals against, including a shorty. Got him. Shut up, you geronophile. I am not attracted to old people. The fact that you knew what that word meant without looking it up kind of tells me that you are. Well, I'm not. I've just been called that a lot lately. Well, if the shoe fits. Yeah, seriously, man. Your team's so old that Jill Biden looks at them as a father figure. Dude, you've got a guy who's got about as many legal cover-ups as Donald Trump. Hey, at least my players know that vaccines don't cause autism, you Cheech and Chong-looking ass. Damn. Don't you have to go down to the nursing home to look for some more hockey talent, cousin it? Ouch. Oh, shut your poor ass up. You can't even ice a full team right now. you out here looking like Aragorn and Gollum just had a baby. Damn, that was a good one. Yeah, that was pretty good. Thanks. Anyway, see you boys in the playoffs. If you make it. We're both going to make it. Oh, sorry. I haven't had to look past number one in the standings in about five months. Low quality fans of a high quality Bruins team. That is a dub. Tenth dub in a row against a shorthanded Rangers team. But a Rangers team that played some of their best players for the majority of the game. In a game that really makes you feel okay about playing the Rangers in the playoffs. The Rangers are one of six teams in the East that if they won the Cup, I wouldn't be shocked, right? There are six really good teams. But I would probably rank the Rangers fifth or sixth on that list. Mostly because they're just good at everything, right? Oftentimes you see teams that are built to excel, excel at at least one area whether that is transition offense or possession or defense in general, suffocating structure, neutral zone traps. Like, they're just really good at something that allows them to win the majority of games. And the Rangers are just good at, like, everything. They're just a, a good, a well-balanced team, and then fantastic, obviously, in net. All that to say is this is a much different team than we've been playing lately, where a lot of the teams we've been playing lately are either like non-playoff teams that are out or playoff teams that are really good offensively and then really poor defensively. Teams that I keep saying we are built to beat. Well, a team that doesn't excel at any given area and relies on their goalie to go nuclear to win games, I'd say we're designed to beat that one too. The Rangers are a scary team if they get it all clicking. We will find out if they're able to do that over the last five weeks of the season. That's right. We're really in that final stretch. But the Bruins, for now, have won their 10th straight game, meaning they are 10-0-0 in their past 10. I'm sure you guys could have figured that out. The Rangers came into this one 5-4-1 in their last 10. I believe now that they've lost, they have lost six of their last eight. I don't know if that math is math, but I believe it is. Their biggest goal right now is getting healthy and getting Kane and Tarasenko playing Rangers hockey. But there's a problem. After the acquisition of both of those players, they are right up against the cap. And having a non-injured reserve level injury to Mott and to one other, who I, I'm kind of blanking on who that is right now, they can only dress 16 skaters to make up for it. They'll be down two players for this game, one on the offensive side, one on the defensive side, meaning they're running 11 forwards, five defensemen, and of course, just jerking between the pipes. The fans are very outraged at the league because the league has denied them an emergency call-up, you know, because they put themselves in this scenario. And I'm just saying I didn't see that many people upset about it last year when the Vegas Knights did this, so... Sorry, guys. Do I think it's kind of bullshit that Arizona gets to play this game with not paying a full roster? Yes, but you can't keep using that as an excuse as to why you should also be able to break rules and get players back. Honestly, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. They're going to be able to call as many people up during the playoffs as they need to. They obviously are still fighting for playoff positioning, but if you make moves like bringing in Kane and Tarasenko, you got to be ready to deal with the cap hit, and they had some bad luck with injuries. They'll get over it. We are 2-0-0 against the Rangers this year. Before this game, each time winning by two goals. Guess what we did this time? That's right. We won by two goals. We are 3-0-0 against the Rangers. You love to hear that. Olmark is going to get the start. 
He had a decent game. Hall and Foligno are, of course, still out. Bertuzzi is going to have his debut as a Bruin. He slots in next to Coyle and Freddy. He's actually going to get to play the first shift, though, with Nosik and Hathaway. I was a little confused at the lineup at first when I saw who started on the ice. I think they just wanted to get him out there for the first shift. Orlo Orlov, Orlov, Orlov goes on the top pair with McAvoy, Grizz sits, other pairs return to normal. Uh, I, Orlov should just stay there. He should just stay there. Twitter, Discord, Short Shift Podcast, Patreon, those things exist. Links below. Let's talk about this game, Puck Drops! Woo, that got, that got crazy. Midway through the first, Olmark! Keep it at level, because he was busy early. But so far, the Bruins have been calm and cool and clever offensively. Not shooting enough, but getting the puck moving around in the offensive zone. You could tell right away that they had it tonight, today. They had it. They are moving the puck so well, you were just waiting for them actually to start connecting, connecting. And someone to actually shoot the puck. Just need to shoot the puck. So... 828 left. Truba gets a strong hit on Nosik, and Hathaway does his job immediately. Jumps right into it. It was not a dirty hit by Truba. Yeah, it kind of was a little high, but I don't I didn't think this was a bad one. So Hathaway immediately squares off with him. Meanwhile, Forbort and VC <laughs> they tangle up. And at first it looks like yeah, everyone grabs a guy, makes sure no one gets hurt. But then for he something gets heated. And Forbort just smacks him with the glove on. VC sheds him, Forbort sheds him. And Forbo immediately puts him on his ass. Immediately. What is this guy thinking? I would never with Forbo. I That would be terrifying. Maybe that's why I'm not a professional hockey player. Because I can't do that. One of many reasons, probably. But I could not do that. I could not stand face-to-face -face with Forbo and be like, I'm going to punch you in your face. Because I'd be terrified about what he's about to do to me. But he puts him on his ass immediately and doesn't end up, like, beating him up. Which is, you know, the bigger guys tend to tend to try not to kill anybody. The play was stopped for all of this because of a Heedle cross crosscheck. So we're going to go to the power play. No dice. We're right back there, guys. It's, the power play is terrible. 153 left. Bertuzzi with a clever dump in for Freddy. He's going to go cross ice. He's on the left side of the neutral zone. And he's just going to dump it over to the right corner for Freddy to chase. And immediately, doesn't puck watch, immediately goes down the left wall, wraps around to the back of the net. Freddy gets to the puck. Chucks it to Bertuzzi behind that net, and he, as soon as he has a little bit of vision, goes through a pair of legs, passes through a pair of legs to get to Coyle, who's alone coming into the slot, and he's going to beat Shesterkin 5-hole, 1-0 from our third line. Mmm. Mmm. If you're getting bottom six scoring, you should win the fucking game. Which, I mean, obviously we did, and we did. 7.7 sec seven seconds left. Bertuzzi is going to go for slashing. I hated this call. It was stick on stick. He didn't break the stick. He just had a good little knock there. We see that play a hundred times a game, but we're going to move on. Let me set the scene a little bit, shall I? We have a minute 53 left of the penalty kill. We're going to start the second period that way. Penalty killing. And 35 seconds into that, you got no stick on the right, coil on the left, two on one. Right? Good penalty killing. We know we're a good penalty killing team. We're not afraid to go take chances. We're going to take that two on one. And no sick and from the right circle goes, I'm not going to make this pass, so let me shoot. He shoots. It's saved to the right corner. And then Nosik pursues. And Coyle backs him up. And Nosik does enough here, enough here, to get the puck off the stick of the Ranger player. And Coyle is there to grab it. And what does he, what does Nosik do? He circles, never goes, gives up on the offensive play. He circles back around through that right circle and goes right back into the slot. And Patrick Kane is right fucking there. With the puck on coil stick, Patrick Kane stands there and watches. And Coil whips the puck to Nosek, who's right behind Kane. And he goes in on Shesty. And he's going to go on the forehand, bring it back to the backhand. Shesty's down. Dunkaroony and cheese. And it is 2-0. Forgot the score for a second. 2-0 on a shorthanded goal in which Kane had the easiest job to stop by just taking one stride forward and stopping that pass. But he just decided to watch. I love pointing out Patrick Kane being a bad defensive hockey player because fuck that guy. I am not a Kane fan. You will never hear me say I'm a Kane fan. 
I despise that player for a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. Anyway, awesome, awesome, awesome play by Coyle and Noshik and terrible play by Kane. Got him. 5'11 in. Marjan is going to go for interference. And this is a great, great, great kill. We killed off the rest of that other one. This is a great kill. But with about 15 seconds left of it, their second unit on, they get back into the zone. They set up. And Truba is just going to unleash one from the top of the slot. And Lafreniere, Lafreniere, I always say yay, Lafreniere gets a tip that would make Pavelski jealous, man. Just a perfect tip that goes post and in glove side. Nothing Omar can do about it. Yeah, you'd like a body on him, but we're kind of in a box. We're set up and so not great, but the penalty kill had been fantastic up to this point. And that tip was so unbelievably good. You just kind of go, you know what? You got one. Good for you. Let's move on. So the penalty kill actually allows one. It's going to happen every now and again. And we're going to end the period. 2-1. We're up 2-1. They got a power play goal. We feel fine. We feel fine. Especially considering, A, we're great in the third period. And, B, they're playing two guys down. The attrition is going to come into play somewhere on some sort of shift. Eventually, right? Well, 18 seconds into the third, Nosek is going to go for tripping. That's exactly what you didn't want because it's a dumb penalty to take. It reminds you of game five against the Blues because the tripping was that blatant. You know, the one that wasn't called. I, I'm over it. I'm over it. Stop. I'm over it. I'm not. I'm fine. We kill it. It's a great kill. But you can't start a third period. You're up by a goal with it immediately doing something stupid like that. 4-12 in. DeBrusque is tripped up to the power play. No dice. 7-01 in. Truba for a blatant interference. Power play. No dice. God, obviously no dice. 7-04 left. This is a play we have seen. Oh, how many times? For over, for over a decade, well over a decade. And it just, it, something about it just made me real warm and fuzzy inside. Marshan goes down the left wall. He's chased by the defender. He goes around the net. Bergeron comes in, sets up in his usual bumper position on the inside of the right circle. And Marshan just flings it to him. Post and in blocker side for Bergeron. A hell of a shot. Not, not overly ferocious in speed or power, but so perfectly placed. And what are you supposed to do about it? Posting in is 3-1. You could call game right there with seven minutes left. You, I mean, you didn't think they were going to get one back anyway, but just gorgeous. And then about four minutes later, about three minutes left in the game, Rangers finally get it out after a long shift in their own zone defending. This is where the attrition really started to take place. And Orlov collects it in the neutral zone immediately, so you know he's pushing it right back up. And he does. Sends it right back up to Krejci, who's on that blue line, skates through the middle of the ice into the slot. Kind of flip pass, just drops it to McAvoy, who's at the top of that right circle, who toe drags and whips a tape-to-tape -tape pass to Pasternak at the bottom of his office in that left circle. Shesty had no chance, even if Pasta shot this poorly, but he did not. And it is 4-1. This game's over. And then these dumbass, bitch-ass, motherfucking commentators. Language, I know. But fuck these guys. They're talking about the Vesna, And talking about how, should we just give it to him now? <laughs> Come on! Immediately, as that conversation ends, Mikola around the left wall, around the back of the net, Checks it to Lafreniere, who throws this on net from a sharp angle. And it touches off Forbort's stick. And the hockey gods chuckle their little dicks off as it pinpoints top glove corner. Olmark's already down because he read the first shot. And it, it goes high on him. And it's 4-2. And the game's going to end that way. We're going to miss an empty net a couple of times, but... You can't, can you wait to the end of the game to open your stupid mouth? Could you? The same mouth earlier, I don't even remember which one of them said it, that said, Olmark's got like a 925 save percentage of the season. They don't even look at the rosters before the game, man. Like, this is a national broadcast, ESPN. Could we have a little professionalism? Misspeaking, making mistakes. You hear that all the time through every broadcast. And he corrected himself shortly after to what I assume was an elbow from his co-host going, look at the paper. I mean, come on. 
you don't have to know every little thing about you don't have to know where the players are from I like that's all that that frivolous crap you don't have to know all that but if you don't know that the guy's got a 935 plus which is a 938 might, might have gone down after this game a 938 save percentage then what <sighs> look at what they're doing this year just look at that if you're going to act like he's one of the, like, in the mix for the Vesna, but then later on you're going to talk about how oh, it's a guarantee for him, would it be a guarantee for a guy with a 925? I don't think so! God, that just was so dumb, and the curse of the commentator just gets in there. I'm, I'm a little spicy today. We shot a podcast this morning about the trade deadline. It's like a two-hour podcast. It's a long one. I don't know how long. It's a two-hour short shift podcast. Go look it up in the link below. I... I got spicy, that's all I'm saying. We were talking about people being dumb at the day deadline, and I got spicy. That's that's all I'm going to say. Game notes! 4-2 dub! Let's be happy! Game notes. Bertuzzi. Bertuzzi, Bertuzzi. Phenomenal. I mean, when Hall is back, he pushes Krejci, Krejci. He pushes Freddy out of the third line, because Bertuzzi coil already looks like a matchup. It was one game, but... Bertuzzi looks good, man. And you can see where he lacks talent defensively, effort a little bit defensively. Like, don't get me wrong. He's not some guy I would toss on the top line. But he absolutely is, is a huge addition to this team. We are so deep right now, man. We are so deep. We're so deep that you would look at us and go, damn, that team team is deep. That's, that's what you would say. Anyway, the other uh, much less fun game note... Power play has been abysmal for months. Just around two months now, they've been terrible. And the personnel hasn't changed. You need to make a change. All of us are saying the same change. No offense to McAvoy and his $9.5 million cap hit. I think he's great. Don't get me wrong. Take him off the first power play unit. Just do it. Put Orlov there. Or Lindholm there. But take McAvoy off because we need, if we really want to give ourselves the best chance at a cup, we need a functional power play that had gone from first in the league in December and then two and a half months later, they're eighth, which is a pretty decent drop when you consider how good our percentage was in December. This is becoming more than a slump if it's been going for months. Okay? Change the personnel. Change the personnel. We have about a four-day break, and then we are back to it with a game every other day, including multiple back-to-backs for the rest of March. And then basically, we have another three-day break at some point, but then basically it's right into the playoffs. This team has earned the right to rest players. So do that when you can. Fuck the regular season record. None of us give a shit. And let's let's get a cup. It's the final stretch. Stay healthy. We just need the hockey gods to smile on us a little bit. A little bit of luck. A little bit of health. We can win this cup. Let's do it. Go Bees! Go Bees! That felt wrong. Go Bees!